The Los Angeles Rams. At one point, they were the Super Bowl champions for Super Bowl 56. At another point, they were one of the worst teams in the NFL. How does that happen after going from one season being the champions to nearly the bottom of the barrel? It makes no sense and it comes down to just a few factors that are completely unfortunate. It begs to ask the question, are they still that same Rams team that ended up winning it all a few years ago? Or are they gone and out of the era? It's time to find out in today's video if this team for fantasy football is still the same as it was a few years ago or if that ship has set sail. Let's find out. Hello everyone, my name is Aaron and this is the Game Day Hour. Welcome back to the Fantasy Football Team Review. In this series, we take a look at each and every 32 NFL franchises and see what they offer for fantasy football. Here we analyze the team's quarterback, running back, wide receiver 1 and 2, tight end, and starting kicker. Our goal is to take a look back to last season and ask, are these players worth drafting? And if so, when and where? Today, we take a look at the Los Angeles Rams. If you enjoy this episode, please leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe. Matthew Stafford, Los Angeles Rams quarterback. I'm extremely happy that Matthew Stafford got his Super Bowl win, so now he can finally say he's done that. But last season, it was so disappointing to see what happened to the Rams. And of course, Stafford didn't play every single game, but the games he did play, he almost looked like a shell of what he was the year prior. Let's take a look at his stats. He played nine games last year, and in those nine games, he had 68 completions, which was sixth, 2,087 passing yards, that's 30th, 10 touchdowns, that's tied for 31st, eight interceptions that's tied for 91st and he had 126 total fantasy points that was 33rd among all quarterbacks it was tough to watch but you have to keep in mind if he played more games you know there could have been a chance that he got better and now he'll hopefully have cooper cup for the rest of the year van jefferson for the rest of the year so i do see him as somebody i would potentially draft I only say potentially because he is out of my top 20. He's 21 on my list just below Derek Carr and just above Brock Purdy. And I think I would have to probably go with a yes for him because he has great receivers. He has great targets that he can use and that could also help him. He's most likely just going to be a quarterback too, though, being drafted in the late rounds, like rounds, I don't know, eight through 11. And yeah, that's basically all I'll have to go with that. I think Stafford needs a bounce back year, and this could be the year he does it. Cam Akers, Los Angeles Rams running back. You know, the history of Cam Akers during fantasy drafts has always been very funny, and that's mostly because Cam Akers in a few drafts that I've been in has either been injured or unavailable when drafted. Some people draft him and then find out it's just very disappointing. But overall, I think that Cam Akers, when he is healthy, is a pretty good back. But how good of a back is he? He played 15 games, and in those 15 games, he had 188 carries, that's 26th. 786 rushing yards, that's 30th. Seven touchdowns, that's tied for 16th. And 136 total fantasy points, that was 34th. So I do remember last year he was very underutilized at the beginning of the year. I think he is the number one running back. There has to not be any more confusion based on who's actually starting. So I believe Cam Akers is going to be the main running back. And where I have him on my list. And on my list he is 33rd which means he is somebody I would draft as a running back four. So maybe a potential flex position but mostly a bench warmer. But he is somebody who could be a good draft pick he does have those sprouts where he does have really good games but i believe that he's most likely going to be riding the bench for the majority of the year cooper cup los angeles rams wide receiver one talk about 
a playmaker. During the Super Bowl run that happened a few years ago, this was the most electrifying player in all of football. Cooper Cup is always a fun wide receiver. He got injured this year, which means that he didn't put up the stats that he normally would. But when he's healthy, this guy is a stat machine, a fantasy gauntlet player. Let's take a look at the stats that he had this year. He played nine games, but in nine games, he had 75 receptions. That's tied for 27th with 812 receiving yards. That's 36th. Six touchdowns that's tied for 24th, 197 total fantasy points that's tied for 22nd. He still was one of the best receivers all year long, and he barely played half the games, just a little bit more. So imagine what would have happened if he played the other half. He could have been probably one of the leaders in one of the stats of receiving. And to this day, I still think as a healthy receiver, he is still going to be one of the best picks in fantasy. So he is somebody I would 100% draft. I have him ranked sixth among my list. There's only five wide receivers above him. That's Diggs, Adams, Chase, Hill, and Jefferson. Other than that, he is still an incredible pick. And I believe he's going to have a comeback season. Bounce back. I believe he is destined to be better than he was this year. Even though he was still amazing. Just the injuries cut him short. Van Jefferson. Los Angeles Rams wide receiver two. Now, he's supposed to be the second receiver, but for a year, he was behind Oda Beckham Jr. because of injuries. And then last season, kind of the same deal. He just didn't produce like I thought he would. But Van Jefferson is supposed to be a pretty good secondary receiver. So let's take a look at his stats. He played 11 games last year, and in 11 games, he had 24 receptions. That's tied for 176. He only had 369 receiving yards. That's 129th. And three touchdowns. That's tied for 72nd. That gave him 74 total fantasy points. That's 93rd. Ew, that is... Ugh, those aren't great stats. I need to see more from him. I mean, he's been in the league since 2020. So I would imagine that he's bound to have a better year if he can stay healthy. But until I see that production, he is somebody I wouldn't draft. He's not even in my top 50. So I wouldn't bother going after him in drafts. I would just say if he starts to blow up in the year, free agency is probably the best move. But I just wouldn't go for him in this draft. I, I just think I, I have to see more. Like I, I'm bound to see something else. But for now, no. Tyler Higby, Los Angeles Rams tight end. I would actually go out on a limb and say this is one of the more underrated players on the Rams. He doesn't get a lot of recognition because of Cooper Cup, but Tyler Higby for the tight end position is actually very impressive. Let's take a look at his stats from last year. He played 17 games and in 17 games, he had 72 receptions. That's tied for 33rd. He had 620 receiving yards. That's 61st. Three touchdowns. That's tied for 72nd yeah. and 146 total fantasy points. That was sixth among all tight ends. That... Uh, that kind of surprised me. I didn't realize he was that high with fantasy with the tight end position, but I guess you learn a little bit every single day. But Tyler Higby seems to be a very top end tight end, but because he's behind the Cooper Cup, behind that whole uh, receiving core, where he was on fantasy last year is not necessarily where he is on my list this year. I have him ranked 17th on my list, and uh, that's still in drafting position. He is somebody I would still draft, but as a tight end too. I don't know if he'll, if he'll have the same success they had last year, this year, if Cooper Cup plays every single game. So I would not put him as a tight end one just yet, but you know, you could start trending him in that position. I mean, he has proven that he is quality for fantasy football. Tanner Brown, Los Angeles Rams kicker. The undrafted free agent out of Oklahoma State is getting his time to start in the NFL. And it's going to be pretty interesting to see what he's able to do because as a kicker for Oklahoma State, he was pretty accurate last year. Let's take a look. During his time at Oklahoma State, he was 22 for 23 and made an attempt that's 95.7%. 
He was 100% from extra point percentage, and his long was 52, and he had 108 points. He was undrafted out of Oklahoma State. So he is somebody who, of course, is new to the game, and uh, since he took the starting role, I imagine that there have been some major changes for the Rams, but he is somebody I would not draft. He's not in my top 25 because I need to see some production from him while he's in the big leagues. So yeah, he's he's not going to get much out of me. Um, he's just undrafted, maybe a free agency pickup, but not being drafted. I, I don't I don't see it happening. And that'll do it for today's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And if you do, please leave a like, comment down below and subscribe. The next episode will be the Seattle Seahawks. And also tomorrow when the Seahawks come out, um, so will be the first game of the NFL year between the Browns and the Jets, the Hall of Fame game. That's going to be fun. You guys should go watch that. I know it's not the starters playing, but it's still football. We've been missing football. And I have some plans for a little more fancy videos coming up. Um, but soon this will be the last week i do four videos a week i'm going to limit it down to two afterwards so i hope you guys are cool with that it's just the videos in which i'm going to be making uh can come out a slower pace but a little bit of a better pace hopefully so i hope you guys are ready for those and yeah that should do it i hope you can follow me on facebook x instagram and yeah that's it i hope you guys have a great day take care and goodbye